understanding a condensate pump, why you would use one and how to wire it into a combi boiler. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm back at the National Gas Centre for Excellence and I'm back with Michael again and Michael's going to show us how, how to wire a condensate pump. He's going to show us a few faults of a condensate pump as well. So hopefully this should be a really good video for new people coming into the industry or some people that's been doing it a long time and they might not wire these pumps in um, correctly. So yeah, let's go over to Michael. Thanks Alan. Today we're going to talk about condensate pumps. Uh, we're going to discuss when you would use them. We're also going to discuss uh, the wiring aspect of them, how they work, uh, how they terminate. And then we're also going to look at some issues that they can throw from time to time for engineers uh, through the, the pump working as it should or sometimes by it being uh, installed incorrectly. So a condensate pump is a, a tool that we'd use. This is a condensate pump and we use one if we've got no other way of getting our condensate from our appliance to a drain. So uh, an example of this could be that you haven't got a drain or an external wall with a, a, a drain near it. Um, so what a condensate pump allows us to do is for us to run the condensate from the appliance into the condensate tr um, pump itself. Now the pump has got two floats inside it. It's got one float that when the, the level of the condensate inside the, tr the, the pump gets to that, that level, will tell the pump to what to kick in and pump the water up to high level, which will then fall via gravity to a drain in the property. So the idea is that if we can't get to, if we can't run the condensate naturally via gravity to um, a, 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 um, a termination point, we would pump it up to high level, which would then give us more options in terms of where we can take that drain. Now, that's the first float valve in the, in the condensate pump. That's there to get the pump to work once the level gets to a certain height in, inside the pump. The second float within the pump is set a little bit higher and it's there so that if the pump ever fails for whatever reason, then it will kill the power to the heat source um, that will stop the condensate being produced so that it doesn't carry on filling up and eventually overflow. Um, so issues that, that can be kicked up on the back of having a condensate pump if it's not being installed correctly and the uh, the engineers just ran a live neutral and earth to it then if that pump fails and we don't utilize the switch within the the, the condensate pump then um, it can lead to a situation where the, the condensate pump overflows um, another another example of an issue that can be caused by this is if you've got for example a, a blocked co um, condensate pump on on the out outlet of the pump um, and the pump literally can't get rid of the condensate um, and, then, then, and if it's been fitted properly then what it will then do is kill the power to the appliance. Now if you've got a, an engineer who's not familiar with how condensate pump wiring works and um, who goes out to fault find on that appliance he may be mistakenly, mistakenly he, may, he may arrive at the conclusion mistakenly that the condensate, um, that the appliance doesn't have the, the, the correct polarity there so it doesn't, it's not getting a live feed now, I've seen engineers in the past start quoting for new electrical feeds to appliances, new fuse spares, new boards in some cases, and ultimately all, all they need to do is empty the condensate trap, uh, certainly the condensate pump, and then what that will do is then lower the water level, the switch will drop, the float will, the float will make the switch again, and then you'll have power there again. Um, so it's something that we need, really need to be careful of when we talk about condensate pumps. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go across to the board and we're going to have a look at how the wiring should work um, and the reasons for it. And then what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a play around with this. I've, I've actually disconnected the plug from this cable and I've, I've actually put each pin on its own individual connection. So I'm able to trick the pump into thinking that the, um, the condensate pump isn't working. So we can test that and see how, how that, what effect it has on the appliance. Um, so let's go and have a look at the board. So let's have a look at how we would wire uh, a condensate pump in, in series with a boiler. Here on the board we have 240 volt main supply, live neutral and earth. 
we have our condensate pump, which has a live, neutral and earth, which feed the pump. And we also have generally two black wires. Uh, they're not always black, but in most cases now, they tend to be two black wires. Now these two black wires, are the, they, for, they, also, they run through that second um, flow valve that we were talking about. So this is what protects the pump from overflowing. Um, we've also got our boiler. Now, I, I have drawn Terminal 1 and Terminal 2 on the boiler. However, we're not going to be discussing it in, in this video. We're only going to talk about the live neutral and earth feeds, the permanent feeds. So you can see the earth and the neutral are pretty easy to wire up. Um, with a condensate pump and a boiler but we need to think about the live feed we need to protect the pump from overflowing by killing the power to the boiler and stopping the boiler from producing condensate in the event that the main pump in the condensate pump fails and we can't get rid of the condensate so how we're going to do that is rather than following the, the, the neutral and the, and the earth and basically running a permanent live feed to the boiler. What we're gonna do is we're gonna loop, we're gonna take our live wire through the two black wires to the boiler. Now under normal operating conditions, what will happen there is that switch will be made for the vast majority of the time. That little switch in the flow valve will just be connected. It'll be just a, an extension of the two black wires. So in normal operating conditions, our live feed is going through the condensate pump and providing a live feed to our boiler. What this means is if the pump fails, the two black wires break a switch and the live feed to the boiler is killed. So therefore, if the boiler is operating, it'll stop. It'll stop producing condensate. And that means that our condensate pump won't fill anymore because the boiler is not producing condensate. Um, it's important to remember that to always wire the live through the two black, like I say black, but they're not always black, the two black connections, because if you just run a live neutral and an earth and you don't put this wire through the black wires, then what will happen is eventually one day in the future, that condensate pump will break. And when that happens, the condensate level is gonna rise and rise, and where it would normally get rid of the condensate, it's not going to do that. And because we've not wired it in via this float, that float is not gonna have any effect on the pump. So we're always gonna have this live feed to our boiler. And eventually, your condensate pump is gonna overflow and you're gonna get mildly acidic water all over somebody's floor, whatever it may be. Um, worst case scenario, it's up in a loft or somewhere and, and you're starting to take ceilings down and, and whatnot. Um, so that's the importance of wiring the, the pump via the condensate pump and utilizing all five wires on the condensate pump, not just the live neutral and earth. I've seen it many times when I've been out and I've found out that engineers haven't utilized those two wires. It's an accident that is just waiting to happen and it will happen eventually because these pumps don't last forever. So now that we've looked at the theory behind it, let's go and have a look at the boiler again and let's trick the pump into thinking that the pump's broken and see what happens. So here's our boiler and our condensate pump. At the minute, both are working as they should. So we've got power to our boiler, we've got a display and we've also got permanent live neutral and earth feed to our condensate pump and because we've wired it in via the two black wires we've also got a live feed to our boiler so that's exactly as it should be so first of all let's see what happens when we fill the condensate pump and make it work under normal operating conditions There's the condensate pump that's just kicked in and it's got rid of some of the water. It's pumped it up to high level and it's fallen by gravity to the drain. So now what I want to do is I'm going to disconnect one of the black wires. Sorry, I'm going to disconnect the live wire to the pump. 
So what that's going to do is when the first flow valve level is reached and it would normally tell the pump to kick in, it's not going to kick in, the pump's not going to work and our water level is going to be allowed to go past that first float level and get to the, the second float, which is there as a, safe, as a safety device. So if I disconnect the live to our pump, so now that's not there. If I now fill the condensate pump again, what will happen is we will get past the first float level and eventually it will kill the power to the boiler. So we need to be wary and keep an eye on this screen. See, the power to the boiler is now gone because the second float level has been reached. So in the same way, we can now reconnect our live wire, the pump will kick in, get rid of the condensate, and we should get power back at the boiler. That's the pump now getting rid of the water in the condensate pump. And we've now got power back to our boiler because that live wire has been reconnected through the switch making. So we can understand that in a really cold situation outside, if you've got a condensate pump, that it may go through the loft to a drain. Um, you, you don't, you know, it may not have been lagged properly. If that freezes and for whatever reason, the condensate pump can't get rid of the water but inside it, your boiler's gonna go off if it's been installed correctly. And then as a service and repair engineer, if you go to that property and you're testing it and you're not getting any power to your live, but your pump looks all right, you're gonna assume that, you know, there's, there's, there's an electrical issue of some form. It can be really easy to fall into that trap. So we need to be mindful about how, how a condensate pump can affect the, um, the operation of your boiler. So um, that's all in terms of condensate pumps from me. Uh, I hope you learned something on the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, if you want to contact the centre at all, or you know, come and see us at the centre, feel free. We're always happy to hear people at National, uh, National Gas Centre for Excellence. Um, and thank you. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for that, Michael. I hope this video has been of some use for you. If you've got any questions, please put them in comments below. And if you want any other type of videos like this, again, put some comments below. Let us know what type of videos you would you would want. And hopefully we'll be able to help you with that. Thanks for watching.